second and goal from the seven yard line. Mayfield goes over with Freddie Kitchens. Man, I'll tell you what, Doug, it is tough sledding in here. And out come the Browns with Higgins going out wide to the right from the Buffalo seven. On second down, he's back, he settles, he settles, he's throwing, it's on! It's on. I don't know where they're heading, Doug. I have to tell you, you have to wonder. This thing is now two and five, and I think everybody keeps waiting for when is this thing going to turn this season? When are they going to start playing to the way we thought they were going to play, at least when we were looking at that roster on paper? Uh, it starts first and foremost with me uh, to be a leader every single down. Um, make sure that we're set, we're paying attention, because if we can't use cadence, then, you know, we're hurting ourselves. We'll get the discipline part fixed, uh, the accountability, uh, but to get to where we want to go, we have to take care of business one week at a time. Uh, and it starts tomorrow. And it starts preparation for the Broncos. Yeah, pissed off. I don't like losing. I don't think nothing is okay about losing. I hate it. You know what I mean? I want to win. You know what I'm saying? We don't work too hard. So I feel like every time we take the field, we got to win. That's just my attitude going into the game. Now, of course, it ain't fun coming in after losing, you know what I'm saying? Because we got some things to correct and some things we need to clean up. But after we get that cleaned up and corrected, don't mean we spend the rest of our week with our head down because we lost the previous week. Nah, get in the past is behind us, and now we're going to do our thing. Say Laurent. Jeez, say Laurent. What y'all got going on? my good brother right here. If I don't bother nobody for the day, when I got to bother you. What you got going on? I'm just saying, I got the camera, so you know what oh, I'm saying? Really? So I'm definitely going to bother you oh, now. You know what I'm saying? Do you feel me? I'm not going to talk. What you got on my 40s, brother? I'm trying to see what you got on mine. <laughs> Oh yeah, he tried it, cause I always go for Larry pockets, you know what I'm saying? I always walk up to him and check his pockets and ask him what he got on my 40. You know what I'm saying? Just check it for money, see what he got for, you know what I'm saying? For whatever I need to buy for myself. That's what, that's the whole analogy, what you got on my 40, you know what I'm saying? Like I dig in his pocket, see what he got in there for me. Does he ever have anything? <laughs> nah, he ain't never got nothing in there for me, you know what I'm saying? No, no loose chains. If I do get my hands on any loose chains, you know it's mine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't finna come in with no attitude with my brothers every day or, you know what I'm saying, with the coaches and this, that, and the third. I mean, shit, we in this shit together. You know what I mean? So I got his back, he got my back. Just cause it don't go our way one game don't mean we turn our backs on each other for the next game, you know what I'm saying? It's part of being family, you know what I'm saying? And plus when adversity strikes, the true character of a man is revealed, you know what I'm saying? So I feel like this, this building is full of good guys, you feel me? And we all want the same thing, you know what I'm saying? So it's just like everybody after that loss, yeah, it hurt, but everybody went out to work the same, with the same mentality, with the same mindset and the same goal. You tell me how I can get better here and I tell you how you can get better there and it works, you know what I mean? So you know what I mean? That just create a family bond. You know what I'm saying? So it's deeper than football. Shoot, let's ride. I started playing football when I was like six. Uh, I thought I was a basketball player when I was growing up. I used to like Kobe. Um, I had a, a little bit of attitude anger problem, I would say. And uh, my brother and my mama signed me up for Little League football. So I grew up playing for the Pinehurst Saints in uh, Columbia, South Carolina. And after that, I went on to play for the Sterling Tigers, and it just continued, you know what I mean? And here we are today, for real. I think it's just special being in the NFL. Certain stuff that come with it, that stuff don't mean nothing to me. That's always been me. I don't care about idle things, you feel me? I feel like, genuinely, we still finding our identity. You know what I'm saying? Like, so it's just like, once it all click, it's gonna click, you know what I mean? But our identity is to go out and play hard and beat the man across from you, win all these one-on-one -on -one battles, and just do what you're supposed to do in the element of the football game. I'm security. I'm making sure you get on in here safe. You said make sure I got your what? The money. Do you have the money? You said make sure I got your money. <laughs> nah, don't try to say back on that. <laughs> The mantra from the very beginning since I've been here has been and just control what you can control. So if you've done that and you continue to do that, that's all you have to worry about. I feel like we've gotten better each and every week. 
Uh, but again, it comes back to turnovers. You could, you could make a whole show right now on turnovers, and uh, we have to eliminate that. We have to uh, play penalty free, especially the pre-snap penalties. Uh, those are the ones you can't have because you don't have any chance at all. That makes it easy for people to call the penalties if, if you're jumping off sides or lining up in a neutral zone or whatever it is. Sometimes penalties are going to happen during the course of the game. Uh, you just have to eliminate the ones that are just strictly mandated from uh, concentration and focus. Back, back by 115, guys. Back, back, back by 115. Practice that I think, obviously, adversity is going to hit you sometime in an NFL football season. You never know if it's going to be early or late. Um, I think for us so far this year, it's been pretty early in the season. Typical Saturday, but in a new environment. So we had a few meetings this morning. Went to a walkthrough at Jeffco Stadium, a high school stadium uh, here in Denver, and did our normal mock game. Uh, now we're back, and the biggest thing is just coming after practice, getting the film. Um, I get a load once you get in here. So this is our whole hot folder for Denver. So there's just like our from the 30th over the 31st and the first, just the different the scripted plays. So like. The plays that they want us to see, we could go. I could go in and watch the actual play live of what Denver's doing, um, and then they got all their different personnel groupings, all their situational, their the presentations that the coaches might have made um, during the week. They always come up and uh, walk us through presentations, but the, a lot of film out here, and the, it'll update. It'll update just automatically every time you log on to the most recent stuff. So for me, once uh, once we get to our meetings at night uh, on Saturdays, it's really kind of Everything should be locked and loaded. You should be comfortable with the game plan. If I'm not comfortable with it, I'll be asking questions and trying to figure things out uh, as needed. Um, but then just trying to get a good night's sleep and get ready for the game tomorrow. The Browns got to take care of their own business right here today. Well, yeah, they start. They have to start getting an identity of what they want to be. So are the real Browns, the ones we have been expecting all season long, are they going to show up here this afternoon? Go team! Y'all have been hungry before. Y'all have been going. Y'all got to eat today, man. Y'all got to go hunt. Y'all got to go eat today. Be yes, your brother. So on game day, people don't realize you, you basically split the staff in half. Half are on the field, half are up in the box. Um, myself and the rest of the defensive quality control coaches, we're upstairs and what is, some people will call it is the eyes in the sky. So we're charting, um, watching what's going on during the game and relaying that information down to the field because of the, the perspective that we have, eyes being up, looking down, we see the game a little differently than they do on the, on the field. We're there to give the information to Coach Wilkes is as, as fast and as accurate as we can so he can put it himself in the best position to make the best defensive call. I got the back. Move, move. I think Joe's uh, really taken a hold of the defense, done a really good job of orchestrating things for us, uh, getting people lined up, helping the young rookie that's you know standing right next to him. He's, he's been a great leader for us and uh, couldn't be more pleased. Let's go, Bag, lead him. And this is their counter look. Just hit it, just hit it, because he'll play over the top of you. Yeah. Okay. And this is their counter look in 11. Yes, that's what I thought they were going to run. That's what I thought they were running. The, the use of the tablets is a great tool for us on game day. So my tablet upstairs is connected to Al Holcomb's t tablet down on the field. So as we're going through a drive, I'm making notes, I'm highlighting, I'm circling things, I'm writing words or codes down on, on the tablet. He sees exactly what I'm writing upstairs. So once we go ahead and we sit on the bench, we can go through the drive. You know, we can really hit the ground running fast. Two receivers right, one to the left. And out of the pistol now, Allen takes it, throws it, bubble screen right side, caught by Spencer, and Mac Wilson got hit. Oh, came out! And Schumer ripped it out, and then picked up there by Denzel Ward, and the turnovers finally show up for the Browns defense. And in the right area at the right time. Go, man. Good job. We're always putting a premium on playing physical, playing downhill. Uh, and that is something that we, you know, we definitely were working on every single week and something that we were seeing throughout the game. 
back. The other thing we're also putting a premium on is turnovers. You know, challenging the opponent's ball security. We need to get three, three and out right here. And on second down, they take it and keep it. Left side running with it on the left side. It's the That's running back it. took the snap. And Philip Lindsay runs it out over the 40 to the 45-yard line. It's a bit of a helpless feeling right now. Denver leading by five, 24-19. As long as you eliminate pre-snap penalties and turnovers, you always be in the football game usually. And that's what we did. And we were in the football game. We just didn't make plays at the end and execution to, to win the game. The Denver Broncos defeat the Browns 24-19. Where do we go from here? Well, the schedule says we go home for three in a row. But I have to tell you, it's a long ride home when you're two and six. Well, you can control on how you prepare. I think some of our guys put their expectation level on the result and not the process of getting there. Uh, and when you do that, it exhausts you mentally. Quality control coaches are really the backbone of any program or organization uh, from the standpoint of football preparation on a daily basis, weekly basis. Uh, they probably spend most of their, their time at the office uh, with very little sleep during the season. Many, many, it seems like many years ago, I was a quality control guy and uh, it starts with uh, the film breakdown. Uh, you know, going back through the previous four games, maybe five games. Uh, it also involves uh, the day-to-day -day game planning in terms of uh, the presentation that's presented to the players, as well as just overall, you know, their functionality on the field. They have to have reports of the opponent offensively, defensively, special teams uh, after by the time that we're finished uh, the previous game. And so everything that we get from a preparation standpoint comes and stems from them. When I first got into the NFL, I was told that the, the quality control position is the, the best position regarding learning and learning all facets of the game, which is, couldn't have been more true. But with that being the case, there's a lot of things that the position coaches are counting on us on to, to be accurate, to be correct, to be uh, prompt with. Um, so all of the coaches can, whether it's on game day or during the week, can make decisions that put us in the best position to win. Immediately after our game, whether home or away, we got to go ahead and get our defensive calls into our, our system so we can go ahead and watch the film with the calls that we've made. Um, at that point, it's watching the film and grading it and getting ready for the preparation for the rest of the week. When we grade the film, we're basically grading our players on their production. Did they do the right thing? Did they do the wrong thing in our game? But um, when we break down film, it's now we're looking at the opponent and we're, we're basically putting their schemes into categories so we can watch it in an organized manner and in a timely manner. Once we go ahead and watch the film, watch the, the, the opponent's last game, um, then we'll start to formulate that game plan. Um, every single week, you know, we're basically creating a, a, a new mini playbook for the game plan. Players have to understand that this is now the playbook for this team. So. It, a lot of it's, you know, making them understand, you know, what they know already and relating it into what we're going to do this week. In my mind, practice, you know, is when the plays come alive. You can sit and draw the X's and O's and, and all the things in the classroom, but until you get out on the field and the players see the X's and O's come to life, they need to see them moving because those X's and O's don't stay like they do on a sheet of paper. They don't stay in one spot. They go from here to there, and the guys have to understand that. The old coach adage, try to make practice harder than game day. So when you get out there in the game, it's, it's nothing you haven't seen before or been surprised by. So it's our job as QC guys to make sure that who's ever playing the look team is doing it as closely as possible to our upcoming opponents. So when our guys go out there and execute the game plan, there's, you know, it's exactly what we think they're going to do. Uh, in between series, I go over and we use, 
iPads or the uh, screen and I take the linebackers over there and we go through the previous period and make the corrections right there in the field so that when we go back on the field, we don't continue to make the same mistakes if there's any at all. We just gotta always explain to them the why. So whether it was a mistake that they possibly made, explain to them why or how they may have gone about making that mistake and how to improve on it. That's what I think is the biggest thing for us because at the end of the day, you could say we're coaches, we are teachers of football. We all feel like they should have been playing better collectively, but the, the key is to look through the windshield and not the rearview mirror. And uh, I think anytime you face adversity, you're always gonna look to either run toward each other or run away. And I think our guys have run toward each other. Bridge. There was a, a tough, you know, sequences of events, um, and you kind of just have to kind of flush it, uh, and it's, it's something you can't really get back. We need to, to keep things moving forward, and we, we need that little positive momentum to get going, and then we need to get on a roll. We, we, can't, we can't go 500 the rest of the year and expect us to reach any of the goals we set. Um, so we need to start stacking successes and stacking wins uh, and, and reestablish ourselves. Just a big day. Yeah. What are we doing today? Uh, getting an extension signed. So uh, an exciting time. Uh, excited to be here. Excited to continue uh, being a Cleveland Brown. JC's a leader in that room. He's a leader up front. Uh, those guys are kind of their own entity. Uh, when they walk on the field, they need to be together. They need to know who their, their leader is, and JC is definitely one of the leaders. He gives us comfort. He's dependable. He's consistent uh, in what he does, and, and we're happy to have him here for a long time. I think I'm grateful more than anything. And, uh, you know, after moving from Green Bay here, you, know, you want to find a place that you're going to be at home in and, and that you can stay and grow. and and live at and um, you know that's what I wanted Cleveland to be I wanted to be here for for the long haul and continue to grow and um, continue to help this team so it was nice to kind of get something done mid-season uh, and kind of just lock my future in. Cool. Awesome. Perfect. Thank Congrats, you. Man. Thank you. Congrats, JC. Appreciate it. Really well deserved, man. Where are you guys going to celebrate? I got a game to get ready for this yeah. weekend. Yeah, that's not, yeah, that's, yeah. That's not we'll, uh, And then we got a Thursday after that, so then we're postponing <laughs> any celebration until about a Friday of next week. So we got some time. Win on three, win on three, one, two, three. Win. Is this a week the Browns turn around the season against the Bills? We all knew the second half slate would be much easier. They're getting Kareem Hunt. Those two things are happening. It's not like they ha don't have any qu a quality win this season against a very good team. So the question is, can they turn it around to the point where Freddie Kitchens actually looks like a viable head coach and this team starts showing you what it might do? Yes, I think the answer is yes. Yeah. Big game for Buffalo, no doubt about it. They're trying to prove to everybody they're legit at 6-2, and two, and the Browns are trying to get things going. They really, really are at the point where they have to get things going. They have to win at home, and they've got to just start winning overall. And they can't look at it long form. It's got to start with one win, and that has to be this afternoon. Every week you just want to be 1-0. You just want to do what you can do to the best of your ability to win that football game. Well, we're at the point now where we don't have any other choices. We have to be 1-0 after we play Buffalo. Play on mode today, man. We got to either do it today. The biggest thank you that a player can give a coach is following through with the game plan and being successful. Um, I don't think there's anything else that has to happen after that. You know, the coach's job and role, whether you're a quality control role, you're the linebacker coach, the coordinator, your job is to put the players in the best position to succeed. And if they do that, that is, the, in my opinion, the ultimate thank you. season 
we kind of were sloppy coming out the gates and we started out pretty slow and, and uh, usually you have a you know a top 10 or a top 15 of plays that you know you're going to get to early in a game where those those should be the crispest plays of the game because you've had all night to think about them you know look at them detail them uh, so I think this is kind of the game that really you know we put it all together where we knew what we were going to get in we got in it and we just moved the ball right down the field here we go huddle 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 what? I yeah, I'm here. Hey, we need touchdowns. We need touchdowns. Two receivers near side to the right. Baker takes. He looks. He spins around. He's throwing for Landry. He caught it. Touchdown. Pretty good coverage, but a great throw. What a throw by Mayfield right over the head of Levi Wallace and into the waiting hands of Jarvis Landry. Everybody has to be doing their kind of 111th. Uh, and very rarely can one person carry everybody to, to win games. Everybody has to be doing their, their fair share, and very few games are going to be you know, all positives when you come to the sidelines or everything goes the way you want it to. Mayfield under center, toss sweep near side, it goes to Chubb, and he gets blown up at the two-yard line. Seven cracks to get it in from the one, and the Browns didn't do it. I think that's something everybody's kind of become used to just playing football for so many years that, you know, sometimes the, you know, the defense gets paid too and they make a play and then you got to come over and, and, you know, get everything reestablished and, and start back over again. And that's, you know, it was the same message after the, you know, the first drive, Baker came over and said, like, forget about that one. Now we got to move on to the next one. It was the same message after we get stuffed in the red zone. Forget about that one. Move on to the next one. That's kind of the, the mentality you have to have. Hit the reset button again. Hit the reset button no matter what happens. Gotta get going. You know, I think the main thing I, I learned in the first half of the season is don't lose sight of why you're the head coach. Don't lose sight of the fact that you're on the offensive side of the ball for a reason, and you need to make sure that's cleaned up. It's a lot like playing quarterback at the University of Alabama. You just got to do what you think's best and go with that. If you're a Browns fan, they're saying second life. Now let's see if we can do something with it. Hey, hit that reset button right now. Zero, zero. Let's f***ing roll. He's throwing, hunt up, caught it, first down, Jordan Poyer made the tackle. The margin of error to win in this league is so small. Uh, I think sometimes that gets lost in the shuffle. And it's just about keep moving forward and keep, you know, just keep trusting the process and just keep going. Give yourself a chance at the end of the game uh, and execute at the end. Let's make a play here. Let's do it right here. Chubb got away, he's to the 50, he's to the 45, he's to the 41, he's to the 40, he's to the 35! Two of our most impressive drives of that game was the first one and the last one, which says something about the resiliency and the resolve that the offensive unit had. Hey, we need a first down here. Need a first down here, make a play. Baker looking, Landry comes back, he made a great catch! Inside the 10 yard line! We practice for stuff like that. That's just how you go into it, knowing what you need to do. You need to go down and score a touchdown. And I think everybody just executed. And that was a big thing. And you know, when the opportunity presents itself, you know, grasp it, take it, run with it. And that's exactly what Higgs did. Come on. Winners, man. Come on. We, winners. we need this. Second and goal from the seven yard line. Mayfield goes over with Freddie Kitchens. Man, I'll tell you what, Doug, it is tough sledding in here. When you're called upon, you have to make that play, and, and Higgins is a perfect example. I mean, he hasn't hasn't got a lot of run for a while, uh, and, and when we need to make a play, he makes the play. I'm here. Go, 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 go. Touchdown! It's Rashad Higgins! With a minute 44 left to go, Higgins was wide open in the back edge of the corner of the end zone on the right side. Welcome back! Here, we need this. We need this. Good rush. 
Where you go, baby? Where you go? we score uh, you know that was probably the loudest I've heard the stadium uh, on, the, on their drive back down where we had the crowd up uh, loud causing you know communication problems for them I mean that's that's what you want that's what we're trying to build here is just you know that that winning personality let's go come on man let's go waiting on the snap it's back he's into it the kick is on the way it doesn't oh, look no. like it has enough it's no good yeah I think we just needed a little positive momentum. We, we needed kind of just one win to get us moving forward in the right direction. And, and you know, it's been a rough, you know, month um, where we've been going through just a, a bunch of losses. And we kind of just needed one to flip the switch in order to open things up again and kind of let that, you know, piano off your back uh, and let us get back to doing the thing we do. It's time to stay. Now, let's ride. Let's go, everybody. Bring it up. I asked you at the beginning of the week who's going to be committed. I think we found out. All of us are committed. That's a hell of a job, guys. I love every one of you. You're a bunch of men. You stay together. You're committed to doing what you were supposed to do. Your job. And you never know when it's going to turn. I know this. We're one and know. And we play again in four days. All right, and let's go to two and zero. Oh. All right, we're gonna need to be two and zero oh at the end of this week, which means it's one and zero oh this week. One and zero oh this week. Hell yeah! Uh huh. Yep, that means get your asses in here tight. Let's go, baby. Hey, hey, one and zero oh on three. One, two, three. One and zero. Oh. Woo! Hell yeah! Hey, now. Hey, now.